follow along with what we are studying. Get this word in your spirit. This is where the real victory is. Amen. All right. We're actually going to talk about today an important subject. Uh, and this subject, I just want to say, typically before uh, these come on YouTube, uh, I have preached these or taught these, uh, sometimes a combination of both, uh, in church, in my local church uh, first, uh, where I am a pastor there. Uh, and so um, by the time I go over these online, typically they're a little more detailed than how they initially come out um, uh, in church. And the anointing is present with us in both places, glory be to God. So uh, follow along with me and uh, pray that it blesses you, all right? Now, uh, we're gonna be talking about uh, the fact that the believer and the human being, for that matter, is destined to succeed. Uh, it is your destiny to succeed, and in the process of uh, succeeding, we have to understand the necessity of forgetting those things that are behind us. I'm not just talking about uh, forgetting the things that you did before you got saved. I'm talking about forgetting uh, that logic that is associated with the what with what I call uh, and others identify as the Babylonian system. That is the system of the world. You remember that verse that says, uh, "Be to this world, but be transformed." Uh, that conformity to the world that it's talking about is the Babylonian system. It's uh, Satan's way of thinking and doing things, things that are just opposite uh, from God's right way of doing things, all right? So it doesn't necessarily have to do with, you know, uh, the clothes you wear and so forth and so on. Uh, but the emphasis there is getting your mind renewed to think uh, the way God thinks, all right? And uh, we need to do this in order to be successful uh, and go into our destiny as believers. Before we get into this, let's pray, and then we'll get right into it, all right? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for an opportunity to hear your word. We thank you for an opportunity, Lord, just to fellowship together uh, over uh, the airways uh, online, God, and just fellowship and hear your word and learn from you. Lord, you are so precious to us. We thank you because we believe, according to your word, that we have victory in all things and are designed to, to uh, walk in our destiny, and we are designed to succeed. Now, I pray that you open up the eyes of our understanding uh, today. Feed us revelation knowledge, Lord. And then I also bind every outside force uh, every outside force is bound and the word of God shall come forth unhindered in the name of Jesus. We take it. We have it now. Amen. All right. So let's jump right into it. Uh, we're going to uh, be coming from, let's look at Philippians. Turn over to Philippians, the first chapter, and uh, we're going to start uh, reading around the sixth verse. All right. Now, remember, make sure you're putting your eyes on this scripture with me. Uh, if you can't, at some point, write down these verses and go back and look at them. Uh, the word that works for you is the word that you have revelation of. All right. OK, glory be to God. Let's jump right into it. Now, we're talking about being destined to succeed. It is the, the destiny of the born again believer and the human being to succeed. That is God's desire for the New Testament believer. Uh, oftentimes, as believers, uh, we assume that once we got saved or born again, that that was just uh, kind of survive and uh, just live pretty normal lives in comparison uh, to the world, and we're kind of waiting for the rapture to come uh, or to go home and be with the Lord. And that is absolutely beneath uh, what God has designed for the New Testament believer to live. You should be experiencing something exciting in your life. You should be believing God for the supernatural. You should be stretching your faith, expecting God to do new 
greater, amazing things in your life. He has a supernatural marriage for you. He has supernatural power uh, designed uh, in your marriage, supernatural power designed. Uh, he has supernatural transportation for you. Glory be to God. Uh, supernatural uh, uh, things for you to accomplish in life. So we're not living to survive. Let's get rid of that, that religious thinking. We are not trying to survive. We are interested in thriving. All right. Now, I'll say more later about how religion uh, has gotten us into that sort of thinking. And when I say religion, I mean uh, the word of God uh, without the power in it. All right. The preach word without the power. Glory be to God. Don't shout me down when I'm talking good. So let's move on. Uh, and uh, we'll touch on that a little later. Now, uh, first chapter six verse. Now I'm gonna. Now I am confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work will perfect it until the day of Jesus Christ. Uh, in the King James version, it actually reads, "Being confident of this very thing, that he uh, which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ." Uh, just stop real quick. Thank God for my barber. You've been doing a great job on my head. Glory be to God. I'm sure you guys can tell it's getting a lot better. Glory be to God. I just had to testify about that. I'm excited about a good haircut. See? Supernatural. All right. Okay. Now, being confident of this very thing, he which began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So, uh, in this text, we've heard it quoted many times. Uh, in uh, church. We've heard this talked about. Uh, we have uh, quoted this scripture like a lot of other scriptures in terms of a colloquialism, all right? In other words, we're used to just saying it without having any real revelation in terms of what it really means and how it really works, all right? So the way we're going to dig into this is we're going to read this in the context of what the writer was saying uh, after this particular verse, uh, and we're going to see the answer uh, to this kind of show up in the seventh verse. Now watch what he says. Uh, again, uh, he that has begun a good work in you, the Lord will perfect it until the day of Jesus Christ. He will complete it. All right. Now, verse seven is where the answer shows up. It is right for me to think of you all. It is right. What is he referring to? Uh, referring to the statement he just made that God is going to complete this work that he has started in the believer. Paul says in the seventh verse, I'm convinced that the Lord is going to based off of what he's saying right here in the seventh verse. It is right for me to think this of you all because, see, there's a because right here. Here's why he's saying that. I have you in my heart since both in my imprisonment, imprisonments and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, you all are fellow partakers of my grace. Now that is extremely important right there. Paul says that these particular believers are in his heart uh, and it has something to do with uh, something they shared in as it relates to, related to an imprisoned uh, and in his endeavor to spread the gospel. Now, this is coming from an apostle. This is coming from a sent one, a man of God that was anointed by Jesus to preach the word of God. The word that this man was preaching was causing folks to be saved, healed, uh, delivered, uh, no doubt raised from the dead and everything that you've seen operate in Jesus' ministry. And he says that these individual believers are partakers of his grace. Now, that's huge. Now, that word grace right there is really interesting. That word grace uh, can be defined in a wide variety of uh, uh, definitions. But in the context of grace in the New Testament, it's not just when God forgives you when you mess up. That's not the concept of grace. Grace is unmerited, undeserved, uh, favor, and also power 
uh, also uh, supernatural uh, ability. And in this context, it's also synonymous with the idea of the anointing. All right. Now, so Paul is saying in the seventh verse, I am confident that God is going to create, um, that he is going to complete what he started in you uh, based off of the anointing that you have sold into that's operating in my ministry. Ooh, I'm telling you, you missed your opportunity to shout. Uh, you know, you won't hear this in, in regular church. Religion won't look this deep. Uh, but we are in a time where you got to look more into the text. No more colloquialisms. You ought to say that. No more colloquialisms. We will operate from a place of revelation of the word of God. Okay. Now, he says they were in. Now, if you do your research, these folks were were supporting Paul's ministry uh, when he was in prison. All right. When he was getting locked up for spreading the gospel. These are the folks that were sending him support, uh, financial support, natural support. They were praying for him. Uh, they were comforting him. They were sending him uh, uh, things that he needed necessary uh, for survival and comfort. You know what they were doing? They were sowing into his ministry. And that, and when you sow into an anointing, you unlock something on the anointing operating uh, in that uh, particular source. And what Paul calls that flow of anointing in this context is grace. You actually partake of the flow of anointing operating in the ministry that you are sowing into. So that's why it's extremely, it's extremely important uh, to use wisdom uh, and hear from God in terms of what ministries uh, you are actually sowing into. Uh, the ministry that you are, what you are allowing to go into your eyes and your ears to be ministered to you. Um, the ministry that you're paying your seed and your ties to. All right, now, the goal is here, don't sow into an, into an anointing that you don't want unlocked or released in your life, all right? And on the other side of that, sow into sources of anointing that you want unlocked and unleashed into your very life. Glory be to God. Now, don't misunderstand me. There are ministries that are obviously developing and are, that are in very healthy positions and that are going forward uh, in terms of direction and growth and the leading of God. And those ministries are called of God and they represent good ground to send to. Um, but the sort of ministries you don't want to be sowing into or places uh, if you believe, if you believe God is is a God, if you believe God is a healer, you don't want to sow into a ministry that denies that God is a healer. All right, and I'm not talking about just that He could heal. Uh, healing is part is a part of the covenant. So you need to understand there is a difference between a ministry or a church or a teacher, preacher, preacher or pastor that believes that the believer has a right to be healed versus the the uh, leader or preacher uh, that believes that God may heal you if it's his will. If in church, if you're still hearing that if it's the will of God, he'll heal you, uh, then you need to take another look at that. Uh, that I would that ministry, uh, that source really needs to go back to the word and get their mind renewed to the whole counsel of the word of God. Uh, and understand um, that healing is a part of the covenant. Now, if you're sowing into something that, into an explanation of the word that doesn't uh, believe or have the ability to produce and cultivate your seed, uh, then you're going to get what you're sowing into, all right? And uh, that includes your tithe. Put your tithe, put your seed into good ground, amen? Now, and so we see here that Paul was confident uh, that these folks would be successful uh, because he knew that the anointing on his life was successful. And he understood the law of seed, time, and harvest. And as a result of their seed and having understood spiritual law in this banner, he was convinced that these that the power flow operating in him uh, was going to operate on these folks, all right? 
We got that. Glory be to God. That's great news. I practice this in my life. I sow into sources that are bigger than me. I sow into sources of anointing that are uh, that are are becoming successful and growing uh, all the time at the leading of the Lord. Obviously, uh, I sow into sources that produce uh, have uh, um, uh, how do you, let me say that have cultivate uh, ground uh, that is conducive to where I want to go. All right, so I am a business owner. I believe in sowing into uh, sources of entrepreneurship. Uh, I believe in sowing into, I believe that the believer should be healed, that the believer can walk in full deliverance, that the believer should be whole. Uh, so I sow into ministries uh, that produce that kind of seed. All right. Now let's move on. Let's go over to the 21st verse. Uh, it's still in the first chapter. Now watch what Paul uh, says here in the 21st chapter understanding the idea that the believer is destined to succeed, uh, we're going to get a little more detail concerning this. Now, in verse 21, Paul makes this statement. He says, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. All right. This is extremely important right here. Operating in a low degree of revelation concerning the word Christ. Uh, if you don't know this already, if you're not in the habit, you need to be going back and referencing the Greek and the Hebrew to what you're reading in the King James Version, guys. Come on. It's time to come up. It's, re it's not okay to uh, not have any revelation that what you're reading in the King James Version was not written in English. You cannot look these words up in a Webster's Dictionary. Stop being lazy, people of God, and go and do your homework so that you can get a revelation of the things that the writers are saying, and that gets in your spirit, and it works for you. The word that works for you is the word that you have a revelational understanding of. So this word Christ uh, in the Greek is the word Christos, and or charisma, actually, and that actually is translated the anointing. So depending on what context you're reading in, you're going to see all throughout the New Testament that the word Christ at times is referring to Jesus and his anointing or the anointing or at times simply the anointing. All the operation of the anointing obviously is associated with Jesus in whatever context you're reading in, but you need to see uh, the times that the Christ, the word Christ is referring to the anointing. So in this particular case, uh, Paul says right here, after the talking about the fact that, you know, hey, I've, I've been uh, on the battlefield, I've been in ministry, I've been persecuted, I've kept the faith, uh, and he's uh, torn right here in the 22nd verse about you know, whether or not he it's time for him to go home with the Lord as though he had some say so in that uh, we won't deal with that. I don't want you to shout me down when I'm talking good, uh, but we will at a later date. Uh, but he is dealing with the idea of whether to stay here uh, on the earth or whether to go home and be with the Lord. All right. Now, he dis he concludes this that if I decide to live and stay here on earth, I understand that the purpose of my living, the context of me being here on earth as a human being is to live for the sake of the anointing. Now, what is the anointing? We see the anointing characterized uh, in the Old Testament, summed up in verses or scripture texts that say, um, the anointing destroys the yoke, all right, and uh, destroys the yoke is better translated, uh, obliterates of uh, the yoke. The anointing is the power of God that destroys everything associated with the curse. Everything that Adam led into the world, when he did what he did, the anointing is the power of God that is relevant 
for the human life, the New Testament believer more specifically, and it enables you to destroy the power of the enemy in any area it exists, spirit, soul, and body, all right? Now, this anointing was made of covenant, but this anointing is a special yoke-destroying power that in here on planet Earth, it should not be uh, in the context of just existence. You absolutely, let me say this, this is super important. You absolutely should not be just alive and be a Christian just to be a Christian. You have work to do. You are supposed to be accomplishing things, great things for Christ with this very anointing, all right? This doesn't mean going to church just on Sundays and Tuesdays, all right? That kind of Christianity doesn't yield very many results. And I tell you, a lot of us, uh, and it's very unfortunate, a lot of believers are, are really going to get to heaven uh, and find out uh, that, hey, I was actually a lazy producer in the kingdom of God when I was on the earth. Uh, these are people that view God as what uh, one uh, parable situation in the Gospels uh, identified as a, identified God as an austere man. That means a hard man. You remember that parable where it talked about uh, the wicked servant? Everybody was given a certain amount of money, and this one servant uh, didn't produce anything with what he had. He just buried it. He didn't lose it. That's what a lot of believers are doing. They're not producing in the body of Christ. They're just surviving. They're in. They're uh, uh, living in a behavioral, uh, uh, a place of behavior. All right. That means you're just trying to behave and not sin until you go home to be with the Lord. That is contrary to the Word of God. That's living wicked essentially. That's a form of disobedience. And you will have to answer to God as it relates to that. No, you need to be busy. You need to be seeking the plan of God. You need to find out why you were put here. You're not put here to be saved and maybe grab somebody else before you die. That is, re that is absolutely ridiculous and unbelief. You need to tap into the very purpose while why you, the very purpose of why you exist. A lot of you have companies uh, to, to uh, be successful at, dreams, movies to make, uh, books to write. I mean, you have, um, so you have evangelistic callings and ministries and, and uh, um, uh, you have ministries that would allow you to go across seas and other places and minister to people with the anointing. The very reason why I exist is to come into agreement with uh, God's purpose for my life. And one of the ways that I accomplish that purpose that I am created for is by lining up with sources where the anointing and the grace of God.